The president of the United States just got impeached. He's gonna be removed. Some of these very smart liberals, they say he's he's done. Let's see what Rashida Tlaib, I mean, remember they, they said this was a sad and sober day. It is sad and sober. Let's see how sad and sober Rashida Tlaib is. Hey everyone, I am on my way to the United States House floor to impeach <laughs> President Trump. On behalf of my incredible district, 13 District Strong, let's do this. Oh, wait, she, she's smiling. What's going on? Why is she smiling? I don't know. How about Grandma Nancy Pelosi? Let's see the rest of the Democrats. What if they're sober and sad? Article 1 is adopted. The, que the question is on adoption of Article... So she had to do the, sh the grandma move to shut, shut the little children of the Democratic Party up because they're about to clap that the president got impeached. I don't understand. Why? <laughs> they said it so many times. This is a sober, solemn, sober, sad, solemn day. The president of the United States got impeached. One of the most, one of the most, or the most actually I've heard, the most biased, the most partisan, Impeachment in the history of the United States of America. The Democratic Party took it upon themselves to dilute the process of impeaching a United States president. And they threw this. This this process, which is akin to calling, declaring war, they took it and they stepped all over it. They threw it to the dogs. A a. A, th this is supposed to be historic when the president of the most powerful country in the world gets submitted for charges. And this is what this is. And this is what some liberals don't understand. Some liberals are out there. They're clapping. Yo, <laughs> President Trump is removed. We won. The resistance. The resistance is here. The resistance won. They're clapping. They're thinking that the president is going to be removing it. It doesn't work like that. Bill Clinton is an impeached president. What impeachment means in general, the first phase of it is just that the charges... He, basically, he got indicted. That's what it is. The charges were made official, two of them. Um, but they won't remove him. Why? Because the Senate, where phase two is supposed to happen, they are going to... Uh, and that's if Nancy Pelosi feels like she wants to give the charges over because now she's, she's playing the, the, I don't know, the chicken game, like ch childish. She, she wants something in return for her submitting the paperwork for uh, the impeachment paperwork to the Senate. Wait, but that sounds like, let me see, wait. I gave you something, you gave me something back. I gave you something, you gave me something back. That sounds like quid pro quo. That's crazy. Now, so Nancy Pelosi now wants a quid pro quo for the, for the papers to be submitted into the Senate. This is insane, man. These Democrats, I'm telling you, they surprise me every day more and more. The President of the United States will not be removed from office because... There wasn't one Republican that voted to impeach the president of the United States. The president of the United States has not had a time, has not had a his due process and to be able to defend himself adequately against this, bi, not bipartisan, this partisan, highly partisan attack from the Democrats who have, nobody, not even, nobody's even paying attention to this impeachment. As a matter of fact, but, but actually they are, because according to a Gallup poll, Donald Trump's numbers, um, approval rating is going up. His chances of winning in 2020, they are going up. Why? Because people see the partisanship. People see the witch hunt. People see the attacks on the president of the United States. They see it. We have Rashida Tlaib who went viral when she got elected into the House saying the next day we're going to impeach the mother effer. Insanity. They were just looking at the charges. What are they going to charge him with? They were looking to impeach the president. But this sadly, I mean, this call sadly does not rise to the level of high crimes and misdemeanors. It does not rise to the level of 
you know, clear, concise. People still don't know. They could say they might know, but they don't have they don't know the truth. They don't know the truth. They don't have the truth. They they can they don't know the 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 reason the president of the United States did what he did. They don't know. You could you could you know Im- imagine, but you you don't have no no certainty. Now Nancy does not want to give this this paperwork to the Senate to continue the process. Donald Trump said that he wants to send yo give, give these things to the Senate. That way we will be done over with this. And let's see what the Democrats are going to come up next because they have they surely do have a very weak field in the in uh for the you know for the nomination. Very weak field. There's nobody there with any type of character. Nobody there. Nobody absolutely. Getting into this Christianity Today article that is being praised by the left, being praised by the media. And you have to be careful or or not careful. But if you're being praised by the media in this country, you might be doing something wrong. Mark Galley, editor in chief of Christianity Today, decides to up at a story on where he. He um, says that. The president of the United States must and should be removed. This strikes me incredible. And this just shows the divide in, let, let me call it, in, in, in beliefs that is in Christianity. Seems like people are not reading the Bible. I believe so very, very strongly. Very strong convictions that Christians are not reading the Bible. In the Bible, there's a king who sees this woman, falls in love with her or likes her, decides to do what he's not supposed to with her, have sex with her, impregnates the woman. The woman turns out to be the wife of a highly decorated soldier in his army. So he decides to cover up the act by sending this highly decorated soldier to the front lines to get killed. That way he's able to not have to tell anybody. And he does that. So he takes this man's wife. He commits murder. This is King David. He's sent to kill Uriah. King David is one of the most highly written about individuals in the Bible, a man of God, but that also had faults and failures, but was good enough to know what he did wrong. Isaiah chapter 45 also talks about a king who did not know God, King Cyrus, and God uses him to do his will for the benefit of his people. You're telling me, Bible reading Christian, that Donald Trump is not doing good for Christians and conservatives? You're not watching the news. You are not watching the news. You're going to tell me that President Obama was better for Christians? When under his presidency, they were taking Christian bakers to the Supreme Court for not baking a stupid cake? When they're taking clerks to jail because the clerk doesn't want her name on same-sex marriage certificates under Obama, under the Democratic Party, promulgating the beliefs and crazy ideologies that are propagating from the left, which are gender normalizing gender dysphoria and preaching this craziness to young kids amongst other things amongst other things all coming all this craziness coming from the political left you're gonna tell me that we're better under that you're gonna tell me that i should sit and not vote and leave that and 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 let that flourish who we should vote for then as christians if you read the bible the bible's also said there is nobody Nobody that is good. Not one. Not one. 
If you think you're a good person, guess what? You're mistaken. Not one, including you, you're not good. Nobody is good. Nobody. You're going to tell me that I'm going to have to wait for that good, good, good person? There is no one. The only one is Jesus Christ. And guess what? He's not on any valid. So we need to vote. We need to vote. He goes on to say, um, and this is why some Christians suffer. This is why I like the president, the Donald, Donald Trump. Even though I do not agree with everything he says, I don't agree. I do not agree with his lifestyle, some of his things that he does. I, I don't agree with them, but I don't have to. You know why? Because I'm not God. Let ju God judge Donald Trump. It, this editor-in-chief, Mr. Mark Galley, that wrote this article, he concentrates a lot on the moral, the moral, you know, uh, deficiencies of the president of the United States. But are you are you his judge? I'm not his judge. When I vote for a president, I vote for that. I vote for a leader that is going to lead the country into economic prosperity, not war, have overall peace in the United States. And Donald Trump has done that. Now, the fact that he might have cheated on his wife, the fact that he might have done committed adultery with women, the fact that he had done all these different things that do not do not line up with Christian value, does that take away from the fact that the man has been clearly supporting Christians in the United States, vehemently against abortion, against curtailing freedom of speech? Pro freedom of speech, sticking up for people being, um, you know, banned because of the way they speak. We should all be proud of that, and we should, and that's why Christians support the president of the United States. I support him. I support the president of the United States. He's not God. Trump is Trump. Trump needs his own salvation. Let him worry about that. Let God worry about Donald Trump. But I'm I'm voting for president. That's all I'm voting for. But he goes on to say this, which is which is something that Christians nowadays, I, I think they far worry too much about what people say. L look what he goes on to write. Consider what an unbelieving world will say if you continue to brush off Mr. Trump's immoral words and behavior in the in the cause of political expediency worried about what the world will think about you if we don't reverse course now will anyone take anything we say about justice and righteousness with any seriousness for decades to come do they take it into account now did they take it into account under obama did they, they re, did they respect christians under bush did they respect us when did they respect us a long time ago, this this country was more Christian. Long time ago, who cares about what Christians say? Who cares about what Christians say? Who? And you're sitting there worrying about what they think about you. I'm gonna tell you right now: if you were to vote for Jesus, they will speak about you because it's written. As a Christian, you should be reading the Bible and find out what are they gonna do to me. Well. The people that we follow, the man that we follow, called Jesus Christ, this man was healing the sick. This man was doing good for people, and they killed them, and they crucified him because they didn't believe that he was the one that was going to be sent by God. So if they did that to him, imagine what they would do to you. What do you guys think? Should we stop supporting the president of the United States, the man that has been helping Christians like no other president in my personal lifetime? Leave me a comment down below. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Remember to give me a like. Only with your help, your likes, your sharing, this channel is going to grow. Let me know what you guys think about the content, what you guys want to see. Do you guys want to see short, shorter videos, longer videos, what you guys want to see? God bless. God speed me, Valentine. I'm out.